This multilingual session draws from the experiences and expertise of LGBTQ workplace advocates from across Latin America to identify new paths forward towards expansive gender inclusion. And in order to forge these new paths forward, we first need to begin to bridge the silos of civil society and business, address how the gender ideology movement is affecting the workplace, as well as examine how the gender binary is deeply infused into so many of our structures, even the very fabric of languages such as Spanish and Portuguese. It's my pleasure to welcome our incredible panelists for this next session who will explore with us these topics and more in a thought-provoking conversation around gender and workplaces across Latin America. Welcome everybody to this premiere session of Gender in Latin America Roadmap for Progress. So my name is Ananda Pushta. I am the country director for ELA Global Community in Brazil and former fellow of Audenipo as well. And I'm really, really honored and humbled to be here with you today to present this wonderful panel. And before we start, I want to you know, acknowledge some uh, realities we have here around the region. So regarding women representation and equity in Colombia, Peru, Venezuela, Brazil, Chile, Mexico, and Argentina, women earn between 49 to 68% uh, of every dollar the man, the man makes. So 49 to 68 cents for every dollar is so less than what they do, right? What they make. And there are far fewer women that hold board or senior manager management roles within the region. This is all over Latin America. And uh, now going through LGBTQ inclusion, uh, we know that for a fact, 94.8% of trans people in Argentina and 90% of trans people in Brazil are outside the formal labor market. And as for Colombia, for example, 5.3% of trans people have signed an unemployment contract, 5.3%. Uh, and in this 5.3%, 79% have felt discriminated against and 40% have been asked or told to dress and act in a different, in a different way at work. Um, that's kind of not right, right? And to end this overview, in Dominican Republic, 70% of LGBTQ people are outside the formal job market. Uh, that is to say we have a lot to do and a lot to discuss today in this panel. And with us, we're going to have Tim Marinho. They are Customer Success Manager at Twilio, Brazil. Carla Avila, Employer Care Case Manager and LGBT. ERG co-chair at Intel from Costa Rica, uh, Juan Paulo Marulanda, account manager at Dow Chemical, uh, work, coming from Colombia, and Avril Tapia, administrative specialist at Petróleos Mexicanos from Mexico. So I want to ask each and every one of you to introduce yourselves briefly with your role, your identities, uh, your pronouns, and tell <laughs> a little bit about your story. Uh, let's start with Avril. Hola, ¿qué tal? Yo soy Avril Tapia. Eh, soy eh, de México, eh, originaria de la Ciudad de México. Actualmente trabajo para Petróleos Mexicanos. Eh, en mi área de actividad, en cuestión eh, dentro del área administrativa, dentro de la empresa, pues soy una persona eh, que hace funciones secretariales. Y me considero eh, una mujer trans, ¿no? Eh, mi pronombre sería ella. Y estoy a sus órdenes y muchísimas gracias por la invitación. Thank you, Avril. Um, let's turn over to Carla. Carla Avila. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, uh, my name is Carla. My pronouns are she, her, and ella in Spanish. I identify as a lesbian cisgender woman. I am based in Costa Rica, um, and as you mentioned, I work for Intel um, within the HR area, and I also lead 
um, the global LGBT um, ERGs. So I oversee the LGBT strategy for all the regions. I'm actually the first non-US based uh, ERG leader. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, I am a psychologist as well. And outside of Intel, I also work on affirmative psychology uh, with my own uh, patients and my own practice. Wow. Ooh, nice. Um, go T, please introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I am Chi. I'm um, customer success manager at Twilio, as Anna mentioned. I am um, currently living in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and I identify as a queer person with no gender. Um, and excited to be here, thank you so much. And last but not least, please, Juan. Obrigado, Ananda. Thank you very much for introducing me. Uh, my name is Juan Pablo Marulanda. I'm from Medellin, but I'm located in Bogota, Colombia. I'm currently working for Dow as the customer manager uh, for the industrial solutions business within Latin America. And I also co-lead the global uh, steering team or support team for our ERG or LGBT ERG uh, for employee experience. Uh, I'm an industrial engineer working at Dallas for six years now and super excited to be here. Thank you. Nice. Now, thank you all for agreeing to be here with me in this panel. It's been amazing uh, to have you all, uh, you all with me. And let's start for the fundamentals, right? So um, in the last year, what has given you hope for the trans and non-binary communities in your country? And what has made you scared or frustrated? Let's uh, keep it in mind that we all around the globe had faced a really, really tough moment with the COVID uh, epidemic. So uh, tell us our, your thoughts. Juan, if you want to start, um, as you are already here on my screen, so. <laughs> okay, that's great. So in terms of like what has, I, I think that unfortunately it hasn't been many hopes to be honest. Like we're still so wait, like we still have a long way to go, and so many frustrations or things that scare me for the non-binary and transgender people. Uh, I still see that we within our, our our region we see more politics doing. Uh, more transgender people, non-binary people, like taking the role and taking the action into politics. So my hope, to be honest, is that we don't see all these politics, all, all these uh, uh, all these bits, or or these or or these politics making an effort for 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 the transgender and non-binary people. But I truly hope these people can actually do it. So, for example, in Colombia, we have a great visibility for one of the. Um, directors or principal director of one of the key universities here at Columbia and I trust her that she could actually do and, and get the agenda to move forward because every day or at least for 2020 and 2021 we have seen like hatred crimes and violence and violence against the non-binary and the transgender people in, in Colombia at, at least so and with that, when you combine that with the xenophobic that we are we are experiencing here in Colombia, we you know that migration people from other countries such as Venezuela coming into Colombia, and they are LGBT people as well, non-binary and transgender, so they have to deal with double or triple the 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 barriers to to actually be happy and have a decent life. So uh, I, I don't see as many hope, like I, I don't see that we're advancing as much, but at least we're having politics that are transgender and they consider themselves transgender, non-binary. And I truly hope that they get, get us, um, they, they can make us move forward on this agenda. Thank you, Juan. And I know that a lot of people can relate with that in Brazil. So I will pass it out to T. Um, to tell us a little bit more uh, about their hopes and um, their frustrations around those years for trans and non-binary communities. Please, Chi, tell us our thoughts. Thanks. Yes, I think um, Juan and you have already mentioned a lot regarding our frustrations and regarding the, the, the scenario, the, the challenging scenario we're currently in, especially here in Brazil, right, with our uh, government and administration. 
it's been challenging across the board. So along with the COVID situation, we had alarming unemployment rates, which put people, um, especially the LGBTQ+, and also the underrepresented communities, right, in a very um, uh, vulnerable position, but let's put it that way. And this has been getting worse and worse since then. So it, this scenario, it's a, it is scary for everyone and for each one of us here. Um, I think the looking at the bright side, right? I see that the movement and here in Brazil, the LGBTQ plus and also the women's movement, we're getting, and also the black community uh, movement. And these communities are getting stronger and stronger. I, I, I've never seen until now how, how visible these conversations and how um, and these topics are throughout all companies I've come across with. I have friends working in different places. They're saying we're talking and talking a lot about, uh, a lot of, a lot about it and also taking action, building plans, uh, fostering, um, more inclusive workplaces and agendas to make sure they cover different situations and they help the community. I think uh, this is the thing that um, pushes me forward, right? Um, on getting a more positive lenses towards those topics. Amazing. And how do you envision these situations, Avril? Uh, what are your hopes? And what made you scared or frustrated in this uh, last year in Mexico? Bueno, en México literal nos ha dado muy buena esperanza, digo, ya que en este año eh, dieron a las dos primeras eh, diputadas trans en México. Yo creo que en este ha sido un avance importante para nuestro país, ya que demuestra la inclusión y la visibilidad dentro de la Cámara de Diputados. ¿no? que a favor de, de esta visibilidad trans, las chicas trans ahora podemos estar dentro de este término de, de política, ¿no? Y lo que me sigue frustrando, literal, igual coincido con mis demás compañeros, compañeras, compañeras, ¿no? Eh, por los crímenes de odio hacia la comunidad LGBT, ¿no? Eh, también hacia nuestras hermanas y hermanos trans, ¿no? Y que tristemente, pues, eh, eh, los crímenes de odio en México son altísimos y que la vida y la esperanza de una mujer trans es de no mayor a 35 años de vida. Eso para mí es algo muy frustrante, ¿no? Y que los derechos sobre las personas no binarias también se tengan que ver y que se tengan que estar visibilizando para estas propias eh, personas, ¿no? Que para que podamos seguir avanzando. That's right. And uh, I want to share that I, in the past few days, in the past few weeks, I got the possibility and the, you know, privilege to meet Salma, uh, one of the official elected officials in Mexico. Uh, and she is just amazing. So yeah, representation in politics helps us a lot. And um, to give, a, gives us visibility, gives us the possibility to speak. Uh, and also develop public policies for our community. You're totally right, Avril. Um, and please, uh, want to ask Carla uh, how... Thank you. Uh, so Carla, how, how did you see this last year? Um, what are your hopes and what got you scared or frustrating uh, in, in, towards trans and non-binary communities especially? Uh, you as an ERG leader, how did you see that? So looking at a national perspective from Costa Rica, um, we are right now celebrating uh, one huge step that we just um, got maybe in the last month, um, which is that now Costa Rican passports are including the gender of a person instead of the sex. And that is amazing because we're, you know, giving that step towards uh, being more inclusive. Um, this was originally included on the advisory opinion uh, from the consultation that the Costa Rican government um, presented to the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. Um, and it took a little bit of time, you know, to get this finally um, approved by our government. Uh, but I think it's a huge milestone that we are celebrating. Um, now, of course, there are still improvement opportunities. It's not like everything is already perfect. Um, and I would say that 
probably one of uh, the, the main improvement opportunities that we have right now is the integration of uh, the government systems. And don't get me wrong, we really appreciate all that we have got uh, so far, um, but it could be easier for our community to navigate through these processes if the systems were more friendly and more inclusive. Um, so I think we have a lot of uh, improvement space in that area in particular. Thank you, Carla. And exactly, if we could, you know, merge and make it accessible, uh, those systems to, to all, and especially transgender and non-binary people, it would be amazing uh, that this way everybody could feel included, right? Uh, and <laughs> what about gender ideology movement? How are you seeing this surface in policy and social debates? Let's start with Chi, because I know that Brazil has a really complex scenario on that. And I know that you are aware of that. So share with us a little bit. Yes, I think that um, what makes it, um, what makes it harder in this scenario currently in regarding gender ideology is the, the amount of fake news that are thrown out there by our government and politics who are involved on this type of agenda. I know this is, this is the, I think this is the hardest when it comes to it. And most people are not really aware of the impact that it has on the community, right? And how hard it is for the community to, stand strong and and you know come across with those challenges i think um at the same time um as people are getting aware of this work that companies are doing this movement that are getting stronger with the society i think avril mentioned something really really important in brazil we're getting more trans people and non-binary people also in politics which is amazing because we're getting people like us to stay and participate in the system, to build um, politics, not only for the society, but also companies go along with the, that movement, which turns into something good. I think that um, that is my, my main contributions towards this, this topic here. Thank you, Chi. Um, and what about you, Juan? Uh, do you have this same idea in Colombia about gender ideology movement? Um, how do you see this going on uh, on your country? So I see this as something that people try to put a taboo or just put a, a bad meaning to the ideology thing. So they think, oh, this is the gender ideology and they're trying to put this ideology into our kids or whatever. And uh, I, I think that right now, if we need to start the conversation through those ways of thinking, then it's okay. Like we need to make visible this file. I know that there's a lot of resistance and the, 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 um, the historically parties that have ruled Colombia for the, the last 40 years like, are trying and checking out like what what is this ideology genre and that's and how does this apply to our culture and is this something that we actually want to teach our kids about because I don't know like maybe seven eight years ago we had uh, um this ministry who tried to do this educational things for gender gender education for kids in 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 in, in schools. But we couldn't move forward and unfortunately like we had to cut all the educational efforts that we have but now but at least we started the conversation and this gender ideology for me it doesn't it doesn't make me uncomfortable at all like i know that we need to make visible the historically the people who have been historically invisible for for most of people so uh if we need to start some uh, from like somewhere then we start and we, we, we keep this, this movement forward. Uh, I believe that uh, this debate needs a lot of uh, education because not even the people who, who are against the, the gender ideology know what, is it, what are they talking about. They only think about one, either X or Y, either blue or pink. So there's still a lot of education that needs to go on. And I think in, that in terms of education, we have made a way like we have made, we have walked the, the, a, a huge path because 
now people and non-binary and inclusive and inclusive uh, language is also something that is being pushed a lot within the region as well. Like people talking about the neutral and gender neutral uh, language as well. So yes, uh, it, there's people against it, but we need to make it feasible. So let's start the conversation. Thank you. And how do you perceive that, Avril? Um, what are your thoughts about that uh, gender ideology movement? How is it in Mexico? Um, do you see this surface in policies and social debates? Uh, how do you uh, envision this topic over there? Bueno, literalmente en, en tema de género, la verdad aún lo veo todavía muy difícil, ¿no? Eh, no lo veo tan presente en la política y en los debates. Eh, creo que se ha dejado mucho de lado, eh, eh, pues ya que hay muchas problemáticas en cuestión de política nuestro, dentro de nuestro país. Eh, pero para eso es importante, eh, como antes lo mencionaban, que los activistas, ¿no? Eh, los colectivos, las ORGs, no las asociaciones, pues sigamos adelante en cuestión de este trabajo para que seguir impulsando la política y seguir eh, en cuestión sobre temas sobre y no dejarlo sobre todo a un lado, ¿no? Y seguir avanzando en lenguajes incluyentes, en lenguajes este, de ideología de género, porque prácticamente, pues es prácticamente como lo decían los, las personas anteriores, hay que seguir avanzando en tema de educación. Thank you, Avril. I totally agree with that. Education is key. So, and it is something that you and Juan and T already mentioned. I want to know right now what Carla thinks about it. What, how, what do you think, Carla, about this gender ideology movement? Uh, do you think education is the key as well? Um, yeah, certainly education is, is, the, is the key. And uh, when it comes uh, to Intel, we are committed to advancing on diversity and inclusion at every level of our company. Um, and not only our company, but the broader industry as well. So as in any other policy discussion, uh, there are different perspectives and movements, and we do understand that. Uh, and we focus on taking action internally and supporting uh, the industry advancement on diversity and inclusion in general. Nice. Yes, education is the key for everything. And I think uh, the more we talk about our community, the more we can, you know, um, go after those barriers that separate us and, and show the people that we are just people as well. So we're just t teaching people how to respect and be with people. So that's, that's, that's the way to go. And in terms of the workplace, what are you seeing policy and practices, trends, and what needs to become a trend or a mainstream in, within the, the workplace scenario? Um, what, what do you think, Carla? So the most important trends uh, right now that I can see are related to intersectionality. We're not only LGBT individuals, we're LGBT women, we're LGBT people of color, we're, we're LGBT people with disabilities. Um, and that is something that we need to bring to the table. Um, additional to this, I would probably say um, that something that would help us advance and a trend uh, that everyone should start using is inclusive language. And I know we'll be talking a little bit more of that in the next questions. Um, but for example, if we start by respecting everyone's names and pronouns, uh, we're given a huge step on uh, being more inclusive. And I think this needs to be a, a topic that we discuss when we're talking about policy and um, you know, guidelines and, and this kind of things. And finally, something that I'm very proud of um, at Intel is that uh, for this Pride Month, it was the first time that we, again, with this uh, focus on intersectionality, we added the black and brown um, stripes to our pride flag um, and these pride flags were raised uh, on all of our sites uh, that we have um, our chapters so I feel very proud that we're you know again moving a little bit more in the inclusion not only for our um, limited community of LGBT people but understanding that within our LGBT community we have diversity and we have to be inclusive of all of us. How nice congrats yes the the inclusive flag is really important for us and obviously intersectionality is uh, one topic that we need to address over and over because uh, our identities and sex orientations, they go often 
uh, in different ways for each and uh, each person, right? Depending on their backgrounds and the color of their skin, if they have some disability or not. So that's a really good uh, way to put the work together. And a question now for Chi. Um, how is neutral Portuguese becoming integrated into the workplace in an effort towards greater inclusion? And how can it be can it benefit both cis and transgender folks? What do you think about that, Chi? This is a great question. I think that in Portuguese, not only Portuguese, but also Spanish, right? When it comes to neutral languages, it's challenging, right? Just so people who are watching this for the first time or are getting familiar with the terms. When we talk about, because there is a difference between inclusive language and neutral language. When we say inclusive language, we're just talking about using existing language to, to come across with terms that don't make its usage sexist, right? We're making sure that we are using the language in a way which we're including everyone. Um, and when we're talking about neutral language, we're talking about different ways of coming up with the language usage, right? For example, when we use in Portuguese, amigues for friends or todos for all of us, right? So there's, there's, there's a difference there. What I see, Ananda, is that you, I, I think that one thing leads to another, right? When we're being inclusive, it's, I think it's a first step, right? Thinking of language um, to be used in a way uh, that will include everyone. So I think it's, uh, and, and connecting with your second question, which is what is the gain on it, right? I think it's um, when we think on the way we use language and make it inclusive, we are reporting and we are fighting against the machismo, right? That um, that's out there in the society. And we are uh, combat, combating, is that the right word? We are fighting back, right? On the gender intolerance. So I think it's, 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 it's a big step, I think. And it's, I think it's highly positive to everyone, right? But regarding the neutral language, um, I will share a couple of experience. Before Twilio, I, I, I was part of a company, of a Brazilian company named Hotmart. And um, they used neutral language when during the hiring process with me. Uh, and it was really interesting to see that happening in Brazil, right? It, mean, it meant to me a lot because it make us feel visible. It make us feel included and respected. And this is amazing. It's pretty, the, 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 um, this is the, the consequence, right, of going through a process, of a hiring process or a communication in which people are using it. And I think that um, it's still, it's not everywhere, of course. This is that I want people to be mindful of because I also can say that I navigate very privileged spaces, right? We're talking about the tech industry. So people that are really engaged with these topics, it's not everywhere. It's not, I wish every company had the chance to be in touch with these people. And you know, <laughs> and this, is, this is part of the work that we do as LGBTQ plus advocates. At the same time, it, we know it's hard. Some people, I have some friends that sometimes they misgender or mispronounce but um, I think that I also believe that part of being a, um, a queer community advocate is to be committed with the learning path. As long as you're committed with learning and you know, getting to know different people, getting used with the way we use language in different ways. I think it's, it's these are first steps, right? And I see from that perspective. I don't know if I if I got it you're right. What do you ask? You got it perfectly. Yeah, and um, being being really inclusive with the learning path is it's 
it's totally necessary because it's really difficult for us, especially in languages that are binary, right? To, you know, put our brains into thought and um, relearn the way we speak. So yeah, it's uh, it's really important to to go there as well. I wanted to ask one if in Spanish speakers you have the same. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to talk a little bit more? No, just want to highlight because the way we express, the way we communicate, right, often reproduce our values and our beliefs. So, and a lot has been changing over time. A lot is being evolving over time. So I just want to make sure that people get this invitation to join this movement of change, right? And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, this is really inspiring. And I, and I want to see if one agrees and if in Spanish speaking languages, uh, things are kind of the same or what differences do we have on it? So in terms of Spanish, I think that it is 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 struck the the region like maybe in 2020 or 2019, in which everyone started speaking like todes, oles, querides, and this uh, inclusive language. And everyone, even myself, I was overwhelmed with all these new terms and we needed to, as, as, as she was mentioning, like we needed to put our brains working and saying like, oh, this is how we used to communicate now. And now we're communicating like this. But more than just doing the inclusive language and the neutral language, I think that people need to have the, the, the opportunity to learn and to become an ally, you know? So for example, if someone comes in and they don't know how to, and I'm a non-binary person, dealing with them and just trying to be, to put yourself and be emphatic, uh, that's the most important thing. Like, they can perceive that I'm being respectful, that I'm, that I'm trying to uh, talk and address them as, as best as I can. So if you are an ally and you see that you have a genuine, a genuine um, purpose on a genuine idea of how to address people, that's more than fine. That's more than okay. Because you as a non-binary or you as a not transgender person, you know that this person wants to be an ally, is on your side, wants to make you visible, is making an effort. And that's what matters, right? If we say it wrong once or twice, it's okay. Uh, if I know there's a lot of people still new to these terms and people are actually getting used to this. But the most important thing is that you're genuinely trying to best you make your best effort to make people comfortable and visible. That's right. Um, allies are everything, right? For for us to you know achieve and and go on places that we that we're never gonna be able to without them, right? So now talking a little bit more about the experience at work, I want to ask Avril. Um, what has been your experience at work regarding feeling comfortable in your gender identity and expression? Can you fully be yourself? Do you do you feel this way? Sí, claro. O sea, literal, eh, en mi experiencia de trabajo, eh, el sentirme cómoda dentro de la empresa con mi identidad de género y, y, y eh, al principio, obviamente, yo tengo ya 14 años dentro de la empresa, ¿no? Y, y para mí fue un reto al principio y pues que, al cual eh, yo lo retomé como un reto y, y en el cual obtuve mucho beneficio. No, hoy por hoy, eh, en el momento, fui la primera persona trans dentro de la empresa y hoy por hoy ya me da eh, orgullo decir que dentro de, de esta empresa ya hay más personas trans, hay más personas no binarias, ¿no? Que se, que, que, y son mis compañeras, mis compañeros, mis compañeras, ¿no? Que, que se han ganado su propio respeto, que se han ganado eh, su admiración a través de las personas aliadas, aliadas, ¿no? Y, y que prácticamente nos ven como las personas funcionales dentro de una empresa y no como eh, unas personas eh, a través de, de una identidad de género, o sea, eso para acá dentro de la empresa ha pasado eh, a un segundo término. Y eso es para mí es algo bastante valorable en cuestión dentro de una empresa. Y más que esto es eh, 
una empresa súper grande a nivel nacional. Entonces, eh, el ver eh, el que tenemos este beneficio, ¿no? En el cual eh, igual impartimos eh, prácticas de trabajo en cuestiones de ferias de inclusión a base para las personas de la comunidad LGBT, ¿no? En el cual es, hemos creado las redes por las diversidades y esto nos ha ayudado a favorecer bastante a incluir a los demás compañeros y compañeras dentro de este... De, de nuestras redes, ¿no? Para que podamos seguir avanzando y sigamos teniendo mejores prácticas sobre cuestiones de equidad de género, este, igualdad de inclusión, y, y la verdad eso nos ha beneficiado bastante. Nice, that's really important uh, indeed, April. And it's amazing that you can, you know, feel really included and be yourself and, you know, uh, promote this in your workplace. Amazing indeed. Um, I want to I want to ask Chi the same question. Uh, do you feel that you can be your fully self and, and be comfortable uh, at your company? Yes, um, sure. I mean, I've, I've, I think that I'm new to Twitter, but I need to share as well. Um, it's been a month I'm here with them. It's been amazing so far. And I want to highlight something that I've seen across different companies and I also hear from different trans and non-binary colleagues on different companies. When companies host these learning sessions, right? Especially here in Brazil, like when they had um, um, people to come to the office and go through certain learning topic, right? Um, in their language, right? When, when, when they bring Brazilian consultants that, you know, help companies through their diversity and inclusion path, I think it, it opened so many doors for everyone, right? Like here in, uh, I know that Twilio Brazil, the team, um, a couple of months ago, a colleague shared a session they had um, with Transcendemos, which is, is it's um, a, a GI company, I think um, it's led by a trans woman. And they had this learning session internally, which was great, right? Which, which people learned a lot from them. I remember that in Hotmart, they had a session with Hita Von Hunty, which is, it's, it, Hita is a drag queen, a Brazilian drag queen. And she's a prof uh, professor as well. And, Uh, so when, when they host these learning sessions, and here at Twilio, we recently had a session um, with, um, let me pick his name uh, very quickly here. I think um, um, we, we hosted a session recently with James Barnes from the US. Um, he's a, a trans man and he helps companies to understand their landscape on the LGBTQ plus inclusion in the workplace. So this type of activations, and this were all, you know, worked through the DEI teams and also our group, which is named the Spectrum. It's amazing because not only for us, it makes the workplace easier and more fluid for all of us, but also for people who are not familiar with to join And, 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 and foster this positive work environment. So I feel really blessed about it. Nice, Chi, really good to know. And now turning over to Carla as well. Um, what do you see as the role of the private sector in advancing gender equality, not only in the workplace, but in society? I know that Carla told, uh, told us a little bit about the public policies that happen, In, in Costa Rica and everything, but as a global leader, how do you see this uh, inside Costa Rica, but outside as well, uh, the role of private sector? So at Intel, uh, we have established our goals for 2030, where we're raising the bar and um, not only Uh, for ourselves, but also evolving the culture of our corporate responsibility strategy. Um, and this is basically to increase our scale um, of the work with others and to create more responsible, inclusive and sustainable world. Um, this has enabled or this has been enabled through uh, technology and our collective actions. And when we talk about collective actions, ERGs take a key role in these goals. And uh, um, when we're channeling uh, 
the, the message and the efforts toward communities through the ERGs. Um, so how, how do ERGs bring this value? Well, by defining and executing strategies that help progress and uh, retain all employees, because all of us bring some sort of value to the company. Um, this could be by mentoring uh, programs, by sponsorship opportunities, by connecting with uh, one another and uh, our external communities through volunteering efforts, for example. Um, and even by educating our allies. And uh, when I say allies, I like to see the term of allies as a very uh, broad term because all of us can be allies of some part of the LGBT community. So for example, I as a lesbian woman can be an ally for the non-binary and trans uh, folks. So um, when, when we talk about educating allies, it's edu educating all of us at the end. Um, so we're, we're all better together. And I think establishing goals on a, on a long term as it is 2030, uh, we can start working towards that inclusion. Amazing. I love what you said. Like everybody is an ally in Central Point. And it's true. Um, we can all uh, support our friends and, you know, people from the community. And of course, uh, not everybody is the same. Uh, our diversity in, in it's multiple within our community as well. So, yeah, educating allies is educating everybody. And um, Passing through, uh, passing over to Juan, uh, what do you think about that as well, Juan? What do you think is the role of the private sector? And do you think that the workplace inclusion can also affect society change and culture change? Yes, it does, Ananda. So uh, I believe that the role of these international corporations, such as DAO or Intel, uh, they, it, it can actually be built such a path in which other local companies don't even think or they, they don't feel brave enough to do it. So while we have this international corporation and we have the, the, the idea and the inspiration to make it happen, then it does a domino effect on the, on the, on the rest of the economy, on the rest of the, of the companies that take part of, of each country. So I do think that it has a really valuable uh, opportunity because it, it need, we need to utilize the platform that we have and participate because otherwise we're gonna be missing the talent as we speak, right? And these international corporations, we need the greatest talent in order to reach as many people as we can to make our companies a best place for everyone and welcome everyone. So last year, for example, we, we joined forces with IBM and Accenture and from Peru, to Mexico, we run this program called Ropiendo Barreras, which is this program in which we wanted to create awareness among our value chains, right? So from our suppliers to our key stakeholders to our customers, within also our, our, our workforce and about the individual process that we need to go to truly embody the diversity and inclusion uh, uh, idea and contribute to our own company or their company or whichever company you work for, how to go forward because, because individuals make companies, right? So if individuals are inspired and are actually committed into walking the, the, the walk towards uh, diversity and inclusion, then the company is making the, is, is making the great effort and actually moving forward. So this, this, this program last year, we had almost a thousand people participating from throughout all that value chain for the three companies, Dow, Accenture, and IBM. And it, it, it made us uh, work together and join forces because yes, it's really important ERGs to have like to be a reality within companies. But what's most important is how do we make and take bold actions? How do we take important actions for the community, right? So commemoration is really important. We need to commemorate the GLAD and the Pride Month and all these uh, beautiful uh, dates that we have to commemorate our LGBTQ plus uh, community, but we need to take actions to make a better world for the community as well. Nice and well done. Um, totally agree with everything that you said and love the examples. I bet everybody loved as well. 
And just for us to close a little bit our panel and, you know, feel inspired, uh, I want to ask, and since you are the one who is in the camera in front of me right now, uh, what is something that each of us can do tomorrow? What is your vision for the future, Juan? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, this is the most popular thing of 2020, 2021. I was on mute. Uh, so... I think that I think that tomorrow I see the non-binary and transgender discussion taking more relevance, like such relevance because it has never been relevant. So now that is a hot topic or a trending topic is really like making a fuss and everyone is talking about it. But uh, I see that it's coming to a momentum in which education and letting your workforce ed ed learn about it will be the key. To success, right? Because I see that uh, non-binary and transgender are taking more um, action and are taking more uh, leads on things and conversation that historically, like gay or lesbian people have been like doing in the past. But now I see more of this uh, non-binary and transgender and people identifying themselves as non-binary and transgender and openly about it. I think that it's going to be such, it's going to build such a momentum that it's going to change our countries for our societies for good in the next, in the years to come. Yeah, and you hope it, it changes as well. <laughs> we, we hope, we hope that everything changes. Um, I really do. I really do hope that. Uh, but I want to hear also what Avril has to say about that. Uh, what is something each of us can do tomorrow with real. Uh, what is your vision to the future? Bueno, para mi vision del futuro en estos casos de éxito, eh, para mí son las redes de diversidad dentro de las empresas, como lo había comentado, ya que son casos de éxito. Eh, por ejemplo, yo en Pemex tuve la oportunidad de ser eh, líder sobre esta red, sobre la diversidad dentro de los trabajadores y trabajadoras de Pemex. Y creo que um, independientemente eh, de ser la líder o, o de haber eh, creado este tipo de redes no eh, y, y, y haber guiado a nuestros compañeros y compañeras, a nuestros aliados, a nuestros aliados, eh, literal esto queda como un factor beneficiario para nuestra empresa, no para los que trabajamos y que para las próximas generaciones que sigan entrando y que sigan este, contratando no y, y que las compañeras trans o los compañeros trans, ¿no? Si tengan estas mismas oportunidades y estas mismas virtudes, estos mismos derechos, ¿no? Dentro de la empresa, eh, estoy hablando en cuestión de eh, eh, permisos de, de, este, de, de salud, que tengan este, las mismas este, eh, cualidades en cuestión de, de género, de que la sensibilización dentro de estas empresas, o sea, sigamos siendo... Eh, factores para que otras empresas también generen este tipo de redes y seamos como unos testimonios más para que prácticamente sigamos sensibilizando y que nos ve, sigamos visibilizando las personas trans, trans, perdón, que existimos, ¿no? Y como seres humanos tenemos derechos al trabajo, al sector de salud, a la educación, eh, que en nuestro aspecto eh, pues no, no sea una condición prácticamente prácticamente para poder ser este, contratadas o contratados o contratadas eh, y que prácticamente esto se visibilice eh, y que las personas trans, personas y no binarias también, que puedan a través de, de imágenes y, y conferencias y redes sociales que esto siga fluyendo para que próximamente las, las personas eh, eh, tengan más oportunidades de talento. Exactly. Amazing. Um... I want to ask the same question to Chi as well. Um, what is your vision for the future, Chi? Do you think that we like, can take action tomorrow to help and achieve a better future for everybody? Yes, I, I, I believe and I see that there is so much, there are so many tools and information out there, right? That people can easily access and starting getting educating, right, themselves towards a more diverse and inclusion workplace. So the information is out there, the resources are out there, yeah, institutions like Alt and Equal and so many others, right? Here in Brazil, we have 
uh, we need to highlight that that we have diversity rocks from Pribetucci, we have Transcedemos from Gabriela, we have works like Ella Community that you, Ananda, are leading here in Brazil. These types of organizations um, are giving companies tools and resources so people can educate themselves and become an ally and take action towards helping the community, right? So this is something that any of us can do right away and start doing tomorrow, today, if you want to, right? And I think that the future is a more, more, more inclusive future, right? In which people are seen, people are being, are feeling represented, right? And not only LGBTQ plus people, but uh, like uh, Carla mentioned, all our intersections, we're getting there, we're getting together, we're coming together. Um, and we're just not here to create more rules or anything like that. We just want to make sure that we are part of we are part of the dynamics, right? And we can navigate uh, places um, that we are denied before, right? I think this is this is the key thing for the future. Nice, amazing. And last but not least, Carla, what what do you think the future can can bring us, and what can we do to achieve it? What's your vision? I'm going to be very brief, um, and I'll say three things. The first one, stop assuming. As simple as that, stop assuming. Second one, don't be afraid to ask questions. What is your name? What are your pronouns? It's not that hard. We, we shouldn't be afraid of asking those simple questions. And finally, become an ally. As I mentioned before, all of us can be allies. So why not just take that huge step to all of us being allies? You just nailed the, the question. And I love how you put it, the three solutions. And those three solutions can be held uh, either today or tomorrow. Uh, you can do this in the last, uh, in the next five minutes if you want to. So the future is now already. Um, thank you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Chi. Thank you, Avril. And thank you, Juan, for being with us. Thank you, Aurenico, for inviting me to moderate this panel as well. And it was really, really amazing to be with you all uh, today to talk about this um, topic, important topic, gender in Latin America and the roadmap for progress. I think everyone here has a really clear path uh, for a brighter future and if all the community is uh, willing to listen and willing to do some homework. And as Carla said, don't, don't assume anymore, ask questions and become allies. Those are the three topics that I think that can uh, go along alongside what Chi and, and Avril and Juan mentioned as well for a brighter future. So thank you so much and have a nice summit, everyone. Ciao. Basis. Oh.